I'm doing something a little different that I'm not used to, uh, or that I haven't put on this channel, is, if you don't know, uh, Holland Horror Nights just happened in Orlando, opening weekend. Today is actually the third night. Today is Sunday while I'm recording this, September 3rd. It's 12 o'clock now, so it's technically September 4th, but, you know, whatever. Um, I went the first Friday, September 1st, and the day right after the 2nd. And I kind of wanted to do a little, uh, like, review of it. Like, how was the opening nights, and how I ranked the houses, or what I think overall of just the experience. I, for me, I call myself, uh... A Horror Nights veteran because I've been going for a while. My first year was um, year 24, which was 2014. Now, that's a veteran for my terms because I was young. You know, I'm only going to be 21 this year. So starting from 13 years old to being 21, I would say, yes, I am a Halloween Horror Nights veteran for experience that I've been a lot. So I've done year 24, 25. Got sick that year, so I didn't return for 26 or 27, but I did Hollow Scream in 2017. And then once Halloween Horror Nights announced Stranger Things in 2018 and Halloween 4, I was like, I have to go back. So my returning year was year 28, and then I've been going since. So 2019, uh, 2020 when it was the semi- Halloween Horror Nights, but not really, but 2021, 2022, and now 2023, so, um, I've never brought that up here, as you can see, I'm already, I have a bunch of merch, these are my new merch, I got a Hellfire hat, and then my shirt is, like, the houses, I also have a Last of Us shirt too. Two other Last of Us shirts. Besides. And then a normal just Halloween Horror Nights um, shirt. Sorry for the squeaky chair. That's another thing I'm going to uh, update. Um, so yeah, I actually wanted to talk about the houses and stuff. Or just those two nights in general. So first night we got there. My cousin and his friends. And my best friend came. Um, it was his first year, so it was cool bringing in someone who's never experienced it and stuff. So, um, yeah, our main goals, like, I'll go over my hype list of, like, kind of what we wanted or what we thought was the most exciting. So my hype list, before doing any of the houses, I put... Um, Last of Us is my number one. I put Stranger Things 4 as my second. Darkest Deal, Exorcist, Universal's Monsters, Odd Fellows, Dueling Dragons, Yeti Campgrounds, Blood Moon Cult, and Chucky at last. So that was my list. See? There it is. Probably not even gonna focus, but you know, whatever, it's there. So after experiencing them, now listen, this will change because. There was a couple houses I just didn't get good runs in, and I know that they can be really good. It's just I got very unlucky that I just missed every single scare. They were either happening in front of me, ahead, or behind. So I'll explain what the new list now, and then one by one explain how I liked it. So I pushed Anything Things 4 as number one as best house at the moment. Now I I am going to be a little bit biased because I love Shinya Things, but this house just impressed me so much. Like, yes, technically it's not like the scariest house, but just visually the sets were insane. The recreations of stuff felt so immersive. Like, you genuinely felt like you were in a battle in between Vecna and Eleven and just... Everything was just incredible. Like, I walked in there jaw-dropping, like, spoilers, hello, first of all. Um, going in, uh, you start off coming into Eddie's trailer, and you're seeing Chrissy, and, you know, he's doing the, Chrissy, wake up, you know, which that got ruined for me because of the fans, but anyways, 
So you see him freaking out about that. And you're just slowly progressing through different levels of the story. And you come across Max, Vecna. And then it leads to, you know, running up that hill. The whole Vecna house being recreated from episode 4 that Max was, you know, was being taken by Vecna. But thankfully, you know, they put up... Um, hit up uh, Kate Bush and saved her. That room literally just blew my mind because I just could not believe like how massive it was. Like, just the scale was insane. It looked just like the show. They even put Max's drawing of that uh, area that she saw in the house really big too. Um, I just and then going into the Nina project where Eleven was. Of going through like back in Hawkins lab and dealing with Henry and they have like a two like face off right here and I remember walking in and the the air blew in my face like because Eleven was breaking the glass to like throw Henry onto the wall and you know bring him to the upside down like that was so dope they had cool little visual effects on the chest and then they put smoke down to like with a look make it look like he was teleporting away to the upside down because she banished him you know it was just insane insanely good and I actually did get a few scares I didn't think I would get scared by Vecna but bro did a good job you know at least for my run through my second run through wasn't as good as my first but it was still incredible incredible and of course they whip out the master of puppets scene with both Eddie and Dustin fighting the bass I wish it was Eddie just playing the guitar, like playing Master of Puppets on the trailer, but honestly it's okay because you can hear it and you see them and they have a cool like screen in the back to, like, to show the bats and lightning and stuff and I thought it was awesome. Um, overall, just it was just such a great house. Um, my second one, I'm definitely being really biased, but I just have to, was Last of Us. Um, visually stunning, everything was, again, visually was awesome. My only complaints I have with the house is, especially from last night, was the fact, um, the scare actors just weren't in it that night. Like, Joel and Ellie were always killing it, but like the other, like, more human uh, scare actors uh, were not doing good. Um, like this one guy literally just walked out and did this. And I was like just holding some like wood and I'm like you didn't even try dude. Like he just he just did that and I'm like what? So I flipped out when I went in that house. Like they start you off with um, the truck scene where they crash and stuff because this house is only set in the Pittsburgh area of Last of Us. It's not the full game from start to finish. It's just the Pittsburgh area and they bring, you know, that journey from there and they do bring the generator scene and I flipped out. I literally screamed, oh my god, they got the generator. And this guy who was in front of me turned around, looked at it, was so confused. He's like, why is this chick hyped over a generator? Like, it's just a generator. And I was like, listen, if you played the game, you would understand, understand that that part of the game was like the most terrifying. And it just brought me, so, I did not believe, I didn't, I couldn't believe they actually brought it in. And some of the other little critique that I have, which is starting to grow on me, but um, there's some like beginning um, infected that are supposed to be like stalkers in a sense because they're not fully clickers yet, but they're not just runners. Um, they look a bit like their heads look a bit big and their eyes are like really like this and in the game they just don't look like stalkers to me like the fungal from them just looks off i'm like you don't look like an infected from the game but the more you go through the they the better they look like there was a stalker in like this bathroom area with spores coming out which they put that effect and i thought that was so cool um that one actually looked like a stalker and i was like okay that's better and then the clickers the clickers really carry the house in my opinion i think the clicker scares are like the best in the house um plus the audio and stuff 
And the other best part is hearing that both Troy Baker and Ashley uh, Johnson reprised their role as Ellie and Joel and made new voice lines for the house. So there's this one scene where Ellie's holding, you know, like a sniper rifle or like a rifle, like in the show. And you hear Ashley's voice saying, go, like, I got you, I'll cover you. And she was like, die, motherfucker. And they cut it off, but like with a gunshot to like, so she doesn't curse. But you know, she's saying motherfucker. And just hearing her voice and seeing Ellie there was just so cool. Um, I just feel you'll really like this house if you're a Last of Us fan. Um, and I still didn't get the greatest run through, so I know this house can be even higher, but I that's why I put it at two. Because I know the potential is there, I'm just kind of getting unlucky. And then two bloaters are in the house, and those also carried. Like, this one bloater last night just went right in front of me, and it was just so cool to see. Um, some of the Joels look wonky though, like their wigs just are like crazy. Um, and I don't like that they put these two puppets at the end of them talking at the end of the house. They, it just does not look good. Like, well, why couldn't you put just two scare actors in there just talking to each other, like making it look like, you know, they're moving. Like, they'll be like, yeah, we did it, you know, good job. Um, so there's little critiques, but still an amazing house. It's The Last of Us. You get what you want and it's good enough, but I just need a better run through for it. Now, the next one. This one shocked me. Um, Exorcist Believer. Wow. As you know, the movie is not out yet. It comes out on like October 18th or something. And so I was never a big fan of Exorcist. Like I watched the original and it wasn't scary to me. And I never liked the whole vomit thing. It was just more gross. And I'm like, ugh. Like... And plus, you know, it's... I never like things that deal with like demons and shit because that, that feels too real, you know? So, I was kind of like, I was excited for this house, but I didn't expect it to be as good as it was. Like, even though I have Exorcist at number three, that house is number one for the scariest. My first run through, I didn't think it was a scary, I didn't think it was that scary. But my second run through last night was insane. Like, these actors, the, the scare actors in Exorcist needed to be in Last of Us because these girls were putting in the work. They deserve a big paycheck after that performance. They were putting their hearts and souls out, man. This one girl was, like, against the wall doing this, like, twisting, and her tongue was out. And just staring at you with her freaking piercing yellow eyes, like, just, like, looking at you so creepily. And... This one girl in the chair, like, fully backbend as soon as the exorcism was happening, and she was, like, freaking out. And, uh, and this one, and what also made it scarier the second run through was we did stay and scream on Saturday, and we, it was still daytime, so we had that daylight blindness. So when you walk into the house, our eyes weren't adjusted, so it was, like, dark, even darker in that house. So there's like demons in this house too. But I'm walking and I just thought this right here in my peripheral vision was just darkness. So I didn't know that there was somebody there. So I'm walking and this demon, all in black, just jumps at me. And I literally was like, oh shit, like, I did not expect that. I usually am good at like looking. But like lately I've, I've been purposely kind of distracting myself. But that one actually caught myself off guard. I did not expect him to be there at all and, and it was even funny it was, it was a silent jump scare like he didn't even press the button he noticed that I was not paying attention and just appeared in my face and that made my heart drop and what's crazy is this this house just keeps escalating like it starts off a little bit kind of slow and then you feel like your heart rate is racing and the house is kind of like following you with it it's like there's like these beeping when they're doing the exorcism um, of like the heart monitor for, you know, like medical equipment. And so it just feels like it keeps getting louder and louder, like a heartbeat's going faster and faster and faster throughout the house. And you're feeling it, so you're just, it starts to get so overwhelming because people are just coming at you left and right, left and right. Yo, that's what she said. And like it got to the point where we were, we were just getting hit by everything. 
that right at the end there was like somebody there and we just ran because we did not want to get scared we were like i saw my cousin start booking it so i just started running to right at the end to exit the house and it was just incredible the only like thing that sucks about that house is that there's this room where it's a smelly house so there's this room specifically where they smell they smell <laughs> They spell mother with poop. I thought it was throw up, but apparently my cousin said it was poop and I noticed it's actually darker, so it is. And you walk in there, I made the most terrible mistake the first night because you don't know what room it is. You're, you've, I've never been in the house. So I walk in, I'm like this and I took a, I don't know why, of course in that one room, I took a deep breath, nose, mouth open. I was like, <sighs> and then because you know, you're, you're walking, you're like this, you're like, your mouth's open so I breathed with my mouth too and I just took a big inhale of the smell of shit and I literally gagged in the in the house I literally was like, mm -hmm. I was like oh my god I'm like it smells so so bad I had I was like get me out of this room please so the second run through as soon as I saw that room I closed my nose it was I couldn't I took a little like this, like to see if the smell was gone. I got a little bit of it. I was like, mm, I was like no, we're not done yet. We're not done yet. That's the only room that I just hate about that house because it just smells so bad. So my first run through of it, I just thought it was disturbing but not scary. Second run through, both. It was disturbing and scary. Those girls really killed it. That's why I said run throughs matter, scare actors matter to really make a house good. And that's what I feel like this is the one thing Last of Us is lacking is a good scare actor group because a lot of them are just kind of half-assing it. Like certain clickers or runners are just doing this. <gasps> like that's it. Like they're not like jumping out at you. They're just like, hi, you know? So that's what's making Last of Us weak. But everything else, incredible. So my number four... Sorry, I'm going to be all over the place. I apologize. I'm getting like, I'm talking so fast and exaggerated. Um, it's just a lot to process, you know? So, number four, I put Darkest Deal. And what's crazy, the fact that it's at number four and I didn't even get a good run through tells you how good that house is. Um, it's the story of it is basically like this musician sells his soul to the devil or whatever in order to you know get the fame that he wanted it's set in like the 30s i believe and it's kind of hard for me to remember this one a lot because i've only done the house once and it was just last night and the only houses i've done multiple times was shooting things last time was an exorcist i've done those three twice so that's how i'm able to more vividly remember it i have to kind of watch some more videos to talk about uh like darkest deal um yeah they start you off with you know the devil showing him the the scroll of like look you signed your name and it's like glowing red and stuff and there was just some great scares the the scarers looked really cool and the set was great and everything i'm really trying to remember why i just like i can't it was a great house. I just I needed a better run through because unfortunately the scares were happening either a little bit in front of me or behind me, so I never got them. But just the vibe and everything, like the one or two that I got were so good though. So like those alone let me rank it higher. Um so that's one of the ones that I said could change varying rating because I didn't get a good run through, so it could either be better or worse. Um and I just feel like the vibe, and I just like 30s vibe, and the musician, and the fact that it's because it's the devil, it's a lot of creepy creatures jumping out at you. So I just, I just really liked it. I just love the set and everything. It, it had a cool vibe to it. Um, but I'll put a video in so you guys can see, so you'll probably understand what I'm talking about. Um, or I could be completely off. Who knows? But I, I know what I said about the whole. Like there's a uh, the musician singing on stage and stuff and you can see the progression like he's getting older and the devil's still there like there's this one room where the devil's on stage with him and stuff and um he just he's like you know what your soul's mine just jacks and the dude just falls on the mic and i thought that was so cool um number five which i feel 
which is crazy this one's also a really good one but i didn't get a good run in i have a feeling this house can actually be better than darkest deal um but i just got unlucky um that's why it's at five um dr oddfellows was so good it's like a carnival type circus vibe and just the set was just so beautiful like it was so immersive like there was so much to look at and there was actually an easter egg they put a little like clown head from carnival graveyard in that house and i noticed it and so i thought that was so cool like oh my god like look and there was another thing that they brought from another house too that i noticed that was in there um i could be wrong though but i know that head from carnival graveyard was the exact same one um yeah the set was just incredible the actors were great i just was getting unlucky with the jumps there was cool little illusions in there too which i f which the last of us has as well they did they did a lot of mirror illusions this year where they make it seem like there's like rooms the room just keeps going but but it's a mirror so there's somebody behind it so you think you, you're seeing through this wall or you don't even know there's a wall there you think it's just like an empty space but a scare actor comes out of it a lot of the houses have that scare in it and i believe oddfellows had it i know last of us had it they hid two clickers on fire and they jump out and you thought there was nothing there but they are back there um, I can't remember what other houses did it, but a lot of houses were doing that, so expect... Don't trust every corner you think is empty, because they're in there. Um, yeah, Dr. F Oddfellow was just... Was so good. It was just so good. Like, the scare placements and everything, and... Again, that carnival vibe it was so... There was so much details everywhere. And there were some cool, like, curtain scares and stuff. I just again missed a lot of them it was that same thing that happened with darkest deal everything was happening in front or behind i'm like dude please i'm like i'm trying to get stuff um but that's how but that's how i know it's so good because just seeing the scares and stuff i said damn that would have been good if that was me you know damn that would have been good or oh i just passed one and you know um it's just it's such a it's just it's just so good it's so good um i'm doing so terrible with these descriptions because like I've only been in these houses once, so I, there's only so much I can remember, and it, everything kind of blurs into each other. Um, number six, I put Blood Moon Cult, which is funny, My on my hype list, it was pretty low on my list because I didn't know a lot about it. Um, I love the facade at the beginning, like it's just like a blood moon in the air and stuff. This one, which is crazy, a lot of people don't go in this one, this one was in the same location as Hellblock last year. And it's definitely better, but literally Blood Moon, if you played Resident Evil 8 Village, it's like a Resident Evil house in there. Like, there's a full village in there that you're walking into and stuff. Um, this one's kind of like just a, a house that's good, but it's not great. Like, I feel like it can be great. It just depends on your run, but it's always going to be just good. Like, I feel like you can't get, like, a bad, bad run unless there's no actors in there. Um, but even at its, like, peak, it's still not as amazing as the other ones, you know? But it's, like, it's just, like, the perfect, like, hey, let's, you know, let's just do that house. That one's good. You know, it's good enough. Like, yeah, let's do that one. Um, I feel like I need to do it again. I feel like the more I do it, I probably like it more. Um, that's why I have it at six, I believe. That that's what I said. Yeah. Um, to me it's like a perfect medium house like it's like it's good enough it has a good enough set and good enough scares but they're not like incredible where it's like yeah like, that was fucking cool it was just like hey that was a good one that was good you know like oh oh actually got me that one you know um and there was a lot of people high up and stuff in that house there, there was a cool dude like on the clock tower of the village chilling up top and that one was just all these sets this year have been very grand there there hasn't been a set that feels like you're just only stuck in one little area there's only every house has like a big open area that you get to see it has a lot of scale it doesn't feel one-dimensional everything feels like there's two three layers to it which i love like you can tell like halloween horror nights is back like 
this year is so much stronger than the past two. Because the past two, like, there have been some, only a couple good houses, but the rest have kind of just been like, eh, you know? Blood Moon, is, I think, is underrated. Um, but I understand why it's not, like, great to be high up with the other ones. That's what I said. Perfect medium house. It's good. That's it. Um, now this one is one of the ones that can easily change to be higher. This could possibly overtake Blood Moon. Uh, it was the, you know, Legends Unmasked. So it's the Universal Monsters House. Uh, or Universal's Monsters Unmasked is what it's called. My fault. Um, Legends was last year, I believe. Um, this one, my problem was just literally bad run. That was it. Everything else in the house was actually pretty good. I have never liked the Legends houses, like Universal Monsters. Every year, they didn't do anything for me. Last year was an improvement, but I still wasn't crazy about it. I think I only did that house like twice. Because it just, the Universal Monsters don't do anything to me. There's no real story. It's just, hey, you're going through different sections of each Universal Monster. And they're the scares and they're like kind of eh. But this one... The scale felt so much better, the scares and stuff, the actual people look scarier because it's unmasked so it's not their normal forms. And I actually did get a couple good scares from the little ones I got, but literally the whole house, I didn't get any scares because they were all happening when I wasn't there. Again, I just got so unlucky with this house, even more than Darkest Steel and Dr. Oddfellows. Like, at least I still got a couple, but this one I barely got any and that's why i know like so far this is the best universal monsters house that i've done to where i'd be willing to do it again while the others always just felt like yeah it was cool but not for me you know like i just don't care about universal monsters enough to be excited about those houses so this one can easily go higher if i just get a better run through so stay tuned um now the next one I put, number 8, was Yeti Campground Kills. The reason why I put it this low was because not that it was a bad house, it's a good house, it's just feels basic. Because it, if you've done the other Yeti houses in the past, it's the same thing. It's literally the same thing. It's the same Yeti too. Same costume and everything. Uh, very similar scares. There's just nothing unique about it. So... Is good but not unique it's like I said it's very safe very basic like you've done this before you know I've I felt like yeah I've been in this house before and what's worse is that the Yeti from 2019 was better <laughs> um, so yeah it was just it was just too basic for me it was like too familiar I was like eh. I was like it's like you even try to make it different like it's, it's literally the same house um, so yeah now these last two These last two houses, I haven't been this disappointed in such a long time. One that comes close to this was Spirit Spirit, Spirit of the Covens, that one house from, I don't even know if it was last year or the year before. And I thought that one was bad. <sighs> at least that one. And what's crazy is Spirit of the Coven wasn't even scary, but at least it felt dark. These last two houses were just... They just weren't for me. I have number 9, Dueling Dragons. Which Dueling Dragons originally was my number 10. For being the worst house. It's the worst house. Just scare wise. It's literally not scary. You just want to walk into a fairy tale and see. People dressed in red and white. Red and blue. There you go. It was, it's literally like walking through a fairy tale. There's literally a book glowing with smoke coming out of it. And there's these guys just dressed in just some red cloaks for the fire side. And at least the ice side looked a bit cooler because they had more like crystallized stuff on them. Like they had like these kind of crowns on them and stuff. Um, it just was not scary. I'm like, visually they look cool. But like, the only thing I give props to them is being able to split the house. Like, oh, choose thy fate. You know, choose which side you want to go to at the end. Um... But it was so short, it was such a quick room. I wish it kind of gave you that option from the beginning, like the whole house. If you choose to do right, you're doing a whole different section. And if you choose 
do this one, it's a whole different section, and then you meet at the end. And like clash or something, and then over. No, it's you're doing the normal house as it is, and then last minute at the end of the house, split, and it's like two, maybe three scares, and that's it, and it's over. Um, it just wasn't scary, it was just all people. And the dragons, the dueling dragons, were these two statue heads blowing smoke. One blue, one red. Like, I literally just walked in the house like this. My head was wandering. I, w I was so out of it. Like, I did. Like, I was not invested. I was looking at things and, like, people were jumping out at me. I'm like, you're just. You're just a dude in a really bright costume. <laughs> like, it just wasn't scary. I, to me, it's horror nights. I want to be scared. That was not a scary house, so it's low. Like, I appreciate trying to be different, but it just didn't work for me. Just no, no. Now, I really thought nothing else was going to disappoint me more. But Chucky took the cake. I put Chucky as my number 10 of least hyped, and I was correct. Because... I've always felt the same way about Chucky. I never thought Chucky was scary. As a kid, like, I thought he was scary, but then once I saw him, like, oh, it's just a stupid ass doll. Like, cursing and shit. Like, he's not scary, right? Um, literally the entire house is full of puppets. Like, uh, not puppets. Uh, yeah, puppets and mannequins. Like, literally, it's just because it's ultimate kill count, right? So you can't have scare actors, I guess, killed, right? Or at least not in the level they wanted to, because there's some with just gaping holes in them, and a like, scare actor can't literally put a hole in them. So a lot of them were just you looking at dummies being dead. In these different ways that Chucky killed them. And then you see little Chucky puppets, you know, people throwing them out a little bit. I, I was literally just walking there again, dead face, just like, what is this? Like, this is not scary. This is not good. Like, I was just sitting there like, what am I walking in? And because it's in the Fast and Furious section, if you did Black Phone and Freaky last year, you know that the house splits. You leave Freaky and you go into Black Phone. So there's a first section of Chucky. So I thought it was over. When I got out, I was like, there's no way that's it. Thankfully, there was a second section, and the second section is a little bit better than the first one, but it's it's just, it's all fake dummies in there, and little Chucky's here and there who actually move, but then that's it. Like, there's like, it was just not good, and my cousin who loves Chucky, and even brought his little Chucky doll with him, it's his number 10 too, he did not like it at all. Like, he appreciated that it was funny, like the line cue was funny, because... They were like playing little clips from like the show and stuff and him talking crap about Halloween Horror Nights or Universal specifically. It just, it was just hot garbage, bro. I'm sorry. A lot of people were ranking it high and I'm like, you guys are kissing Chucky's ass so hard. I'm like, it was not good. I'm sorry. Like, cause... I just can't. I, it just was not good. I, there's there's only so much I can say. Um, yeah. It was not good. Um, but that's how I felt about the houses. There's definitely the ones I mentioned before. You know, Dr. Oddfellow's Darkest Deal. Definitely Universal Monsters. I definitely need better runs in. And hopefully they're better. Yeah, this year just feels really good. Like, I only have two houses that I will not go back in. While other years, there was, like, multiple. There was at least four I would even do, which is crazy. Um, but, yeah, this year is definitely feels like a fully 100% um, like restoration of Halloween Horror Nights. Because the past two, you could still feel that it was affected by COVID. And, oh my god! I'm forgetting the best part of this whole video, Nightmare Fuel. Bro, I watched Nightmare Fuel the first year it came out because I loved watching Academy Villains prior to that and I was very butthurt that unfortunately they were no longer doing it because of things that happened with the group and they broke up. Very, very heartbreaking. 
Um, so with Nightmare Fuel, I've been watching since they first came there, and I fell in love with these two dancers, Devin and Megan. Um, and last year was Wildfire, and it was very similar to the the first year. And even though I enjoyed it still, like I still fucking love last year's show. I knew I was like, ah, I kind of wish they were a little bit more unique because it's literally the same show. Um, just little songs and dances were changed here and there, but it was literally the same thing. So my main thing was I really hope they change it, change it more, but not fully, but you know, change it enough, like just add a little bit more to the story. And man, oh man, did they deliver. This is called, um, um, Revenge Dream, I believe. It is. Um, so this one, if you don't know, the normal show is just there's a dreamer and they usually set up a clock to kind of wake them up from their nightmare because every time they go to sleep, they're induced into this nightmare and it's endless. Like these people are constantly going at them and trying to kill them or whatever. And it's always been two guys. It's always been guys for the past two years as the dreamer. The first year was a white guy and I'm at. And I'm being like this because it's just how it is. Your first year was a white guy, second year was a black guy, but now this year it is a woman. Um, white as well. Uh, so I like that each year had a different, you know, dreamer, not just the same like person every time. So I like that again, white guy, black guy. Now it's a girl. Um, and so. This time, this streamer was like, you know what? I'm gonna fight back. Like, it's gonna be different. And she doesn't even set up the clock to wake herself up. She's like, nope. She was like, I'm committed. I don't need it. And so the normal bed transition is usually from a guy to a girl. And it's usually the, the nightmare queen. So since she's a girl already, the dreamer, when she goes into the bed, it's a, it's a guy um, who swaps out. And so it actually felt like a fight that was happening the songs were completely different there was only one song they brought back from last year um it just felt so much more badass like the um, dancers specifically were on stage way longer like they're practically on stage like the entire time Versus before where it would just be like they have their segment and then they leave and then the fuel girls came in because of the wildfire So it was more their year um, They would have a whole performance for so long while they're just in the back waiting to come back out for their next section No, this one They're just constantly on stage like everybody's on stage and The story was different and how like I said she's fighting back and so she, she still manages to escape all their stuff and then when she's finally like awoken or whatever because they thought they killed her she was like i don't want to escape she was like i want to become it you know and she kills the queen and becomes the new queen of the nightmare fuel and it was just so good i loved it i called it but like it was great to actually have a story now it felt really good and everybody was just on point and just it just felt much grander more epic this one and I was just so happy I was I watched it twice last night <laughs> um I have clips and stuff that I should be able to show you guys but yeah this year was really good um um it's just a very solid year it's really good definitely go if you have a chance um I'm lost of words I'm really tired um so I'm gonna dip I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you want me to do something like this again please let me know and do not hesitate um i should be getting back into my stream this is a very long video so i apologize um but yeah hey have a lovely lovely day and i'll see you guys in the next one Deuces.